Learning how to code was one of the best decisions I've ever made. Not because it made me a lot of money or because it taught me how to become a good problem solver. It's because through countless hours of hard work, I turned a once unimaginable goal into a reality and proved to myself that I could do anything that I put my mind to. I used to push carts for only $8 an hour, dreaming about the day doing something I found fulfilling. It wasn't even about coding. I just wanted to feel like I was living my purpose through my work. And after a handful of years, I finally got to that point. But like all things in life, once you actually achieve your goal, it's way different than you previously imagined. With that being said, here are the things nobody told me about becoming a programmer. To kick things off, we have to go all the way back to 2014 and get to know my 18 year old self. Fresh out of high school, I was faced with the tough question that every young adult has to answer. What do I wanna do for the rest of my life? Now as an 18 year old who has a very limited understanding of the world, you're told you have to pick something to study because this is what you're going to do until you die. Now obviously that isn't true. Matter of fact, it's extremely common to switch majors in college or even switch careers later down the road. But when you're 18, it feels like a consequential decision that you really don't want to mess up. But I was lucky enough to have a general idea of what I wanted to do. I knew tech was the way to go. I had some financial success running a multiplayer server for the game Minecraft in my mid teenage years, which exposed me to some basic networking administrative concepts. Even though I wasn't 100% sold on being a network administrator for the rest of my life, this is the decision I made at that time. So I enrolled into community college with this unsure plan in mind. Now, the reason why I was unsure is because computer science was something I was really considering over networking. See, my dad is a programmer, and some basic coding classes in high school exposed me to lightweight weight programming concepts that I did have a mild interest in. But ultimately, I decided against programming for a couple of reasons. One of the biggest ones being I had a horrible misconception about software developers and what they actually did. Remember, this was 2014. Programming wasn't as cool as it is today. There weren't any day in the life of a software engineer videos to show me what being a programmer was like. Not like any of those help anyways. Regardless, I thought that if I became a programmer, I would be glued to my computer all day and have virtually no contact with people. I thought I would be some corporate worker stuck inside a cubicle all day slinging out code. And that idea really scared me. So the thought was, if I become a network admin, at least I would be able to work with people, set up cables around the office, troubleshoot other people's devices, so on and so forth. Now, is this what a network admin does all day? I have no idea because a year or so later, I gave up on my lackluster networking aspirations, started learning how to code on my own and ended up leaving college to pursue software development full time. Let me tell you something. Programming is the exact opposite of being stuck in a cubicle all day, having zero contact with people. As a software developer, writing code is just a small piece of the pie when it comes to your job. As a programmer, you're going to have a ton of meetings. Some days I have hours upon hours of meetings where I'm helping in planning for new features, talking through technical implementations, paired programming, and much more. Now, you've probably heard of the daily stand-up meeting that is guaranteed to be an every day in the life video. This one small meeting, usually around 15 minutes long, is part of a much larger structure of meetings in the software development corporate world. Most companies nowadays tend to follow this thing called Agile, which is essentially a way to develop software iteratively. If you want a full explanation, explanation of Agile, I have a 15 minute video talking about this process, how companies abuse it, and even interviewed one of the OG creators of this idea. Anyways, Agile includes a long list of meetings, usually held weekly or semi-weekly. And alongside these weekly meetings, you'll work closely with other software developers, whether that's through the means of paired programming or just talking through technical implementation. So the point being, if you're worried about being stuck in a cubicle all day, never Ever talking to anyone that is totally not the case even in this new remote world that we live in I'm constantly on meetings I'm constantly working with my co-workers however I didn't really learn that this wasn't the case until I started working full-time anyways once I ultimately decided to become a programmer and took on self-study outside of college I worked on a bunch of tutorials 
watched a lot of content, but none of them prepared me enough for what I'd actually be doing on the job. Which brings me to my next point. Tutorials and consuming content only prepare you so much. Don't get me wrong, if you do things right, they should prepare you enough to get your foot in the door, but you really don't know anything until you start working on real products that people are using with a team of other developers. I think there is a slight disconnect from what you learn versus what you'll actually be doing on the job. Like I mentioned in the first point, at most modern organizations, you'll be using this process called Agile or a variation of it. Well, I don't think you need to become an expert by any means. I think having a high level understanding of Agile, the different roles on a development team, and the software development life cycle is pretty important. So if you're looking for a deeper understanding of Agile, you may be interested in checking out the Agile Samurai Bootcamp that is on Udemy who is the sponsor of today's video. I've personally been using Udemy since I first started learning how to code. I've learned so much on their platform, so it is really great to partner up with them. Now, if you're interested in some other courses related to learning how to code, a few that I recommend are the Complete Web Development Bootcamp by Angela Yu, if you're interested in getting in the web development space. iOS and Swift, the Complete iOS App Development Bootcamp, also by Angela, if you are interested interested in getting into iOS development. And one that I've dived into recently, React the Complete Guide by Maximilian Schwartzmuller. I'll put these and a couple other courses I recommend in the description, so make sure to check those out. Huge shout out and big thank you to Udemy for sponsoring this video. All right, all that aside, another thing nobody told me about becoming a programmer is the tools and processes you'll be using will usually be quite different from what you're used to as a solo coder. Now, I don't want to dive too deep into what tools and processes you'll be using because it is going to vary from organization to organization, but I will say this. When starting that first programming job, you should absolutely have a strong aptitude to learn. It's important to check your ego and what you think you know when you walk into that first programming job or even any new job for that matter. You're probably not going to be the smartest one in the room, and if you are, you should probably consider finding a new job. Now, my learning exponentially ramped up after I started working with people significantly smarter than me. And if you let your ego get in the way, you're only going to hurt yourself in the long term. When I started my first full-time job, I worked with a guy, we'll call him Bob. Bob was my age and I didn't want to believe he was smarter than me because on paper, we were at the same level. And at first I denied it, but after watching him work and write exceptional code, code that was 10 times better than what I could do. I had to let this idea of myself die. And I'll be honest, it wasn't easy and I still haven't fully gotten to the point where I never let my ego get in the way. But I started to learn a lot from this guy. I would constantly ask him questions and modeled my work after him. This guy taught me so much, especially about mobile Android development. And to this day, I still model my code and how I work after him. Ever since that experience, every time I start working with a different developer, I try to go in with the mindset that there's something I can learn from this person regardless of their level. You can find teachers and mentors online, sure, but the best ones you'll ever find will be the ones in real life. The ones that are so passionate about coding that that's all they consume their life with. Now, this guy worked all the time. He was always researching the latest and greatest, and it wasn't because he had to, it was because he wanted to stay on top of things. Which brings me to my next point. Your career is going to be dependent on your ability to adapt and learn all the time at any stage in your programming career. I've been programming for over six years and I've already had to learn a bunch of different languages, frameworks, tools, and best practices. Languages, tools, and frameworks become outdated, but what doesn't become outdated is your deep understanding of software development principles, concepts, and your ability to tackle a problem and flex this analytical part of your brain that you've been building up. Now there is one last thing that I wanna talk about, and at the end of the day, coding is just another job. Don't get me wrong, going from making minimum wage to making six figures is an extreme blessing, but a cushiony tech job isn't going to solve all your problems. No matter what you do in life, you're gonna have to do the stuff that you don't wanna do to do the stuff that you do wanna do. You're gonna have to face unique challenges, whether that be with your coworkers, with stress from the job, 
imposter syndrome, or perhaps being unfulfilled with the product that you're working on. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up. Honestly, I could go on all day about things nobody told me about becoming a programmer. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you on the next one.